One mustn't break the illusion, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Welcome, one and everyone, to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Wings episode, episode 358, I believe. I am your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn, here as always with my suspenders set to maximum stun. We have a great show for you today, and by we, I mean me. We've got all sorts of beverages and combustibles. I've got a Princeps Churchill-sized cigar. I'm saving this for later. But the cigar that I'm going to be smoking right away is this La Aurora Leon e Corojo, which is a very, 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 very fine cigar in my opinion. In fact, I think it's one of my favorites. <clears throat> Let me pop out that chat so I can actually read what you're saying. There we go. And in terms of drinks, I have Glen Cullen. Glen Cullen Scotch Whiskey, Speyside Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged 10 years, distilled, matured, and bottled in Scotland. I, uh, this was on special sale at the liquor store near my home, and so I snatched it up. I'm really excited about that. And then, of course, the extra layer on top, I'm, I'm currently drinking a Belgian beer, some Hefe, because I just finished my dinner. My beautiful wife made me a turkey and bacon and mayonnaise sandwich, and I wolfed it. Not that I, like, turned it into a wolf by, I don't know, casting a spell on it or something, but I wolfed it in that I ate it quickly like a wolf eats its food quickly demons inside says yo man you're the best i've gotten so much inspiration from you thank you very much demons inside pleasure to have you on the program today i assume you're referring to my fallout 4 videos and if that's the case you are indeed welcome and i'm just glad that you're watching and subscribing so thank you very much for that by the way i've got a new video coming out tomorrow i'm super excited about it it's all about some new mods <clears throat> that I've discovered for Fallout 4, including one that allows you to assign some of your settlers to a singing microphone, and they put on a show like Magnolia from Good Neighbor. So I'm excited about that mod <clears throat> and showing it off for you all tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Imagine Justin says, turkey and bacon sandwich, mmm. And then Madman Max says, but with mayo? Oh yeah. You can't have a turkey and bacon sandwich without mayo. I mean, what are you going to put on it? Salad dressing? Ranch? Mayo all the way. Ah, uh, Madman Max says, are we getting an extra long show today? Yeah, yeah, I mean, not, not extra long. <clears throat> it's going to be, a, you know, an hour, an hour and a half, something like that, maybe two hours. We'll be playing some Overwatch later, so I hope you're all excited about that. Demons Inside says, you actually inspired me to upload my first video of one of my settlements, and with the PC vs. Consoles video, I couldn't agree more. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much for your kind words. He's referring to a video I released the day before yesterday where I basically went on a rant uh, about people who will sometimes post on my videos and say things like, oh, you need to put a console warning disclaimer at the beginning of my videos, you know. Video game is my safe space, and if I know that you're using mods, that's not a safe space. Blah! You know, sometimes I'll get those comments. But not very often. Anyway, I went on a little rant about that, and it was a lot of fun. Robin2258 is in the chat today and says, hello? Hello, Robin. Pleasure to have you on the program. Old Iron Bark is here and says, good evening, all. Good evening, good sir. Pleasure to have you on the program. The Bansy Fadger says, just no lettuce. Yeah, no lettuce. Who would put lettuce on a turkey and bacon and mayo sandwich. That would just ruin it. Ooh. <sighs> Terror Wraith says, I just finished all the Far Harbor content. Getting all the trophies on my PS4. Consoles equals winning. <laughs> Alright. Um, I'm proud of you. Congratulations on beating... Far Harbor on console. Hey, as I said in my consoles versus PC video, I have nothing against consoles even though I am a PC player because I grew up on consoles. I have fond memories of consoles. So there you go. 
<laughs> Greg Hartung says, Lettuce tastes bland. Hardly worthy of being placed on my sandwiches. Exactly, and it tastes even more bland when placed next to bacon. Bacon, the king of foods. Bacon, the king of flavor. Anything next to it is inferior by comparison. Which is why you must always associate bacon with really good things. Like more bacon. Bacon makes the perfect companion to bacon. You can quote Oxhorn on that. Robin2258 says, spinach is greater than lettuce. It's like lettuce, but with flavor. I do agree. The inner Popeye with, within me is, has, a, has a soft spot for uh, spinach. Demons Inside says, I can't wait for mods for the PS4 to finally decorate my settlements without things flying everywhere. I really hope OC Decorator comes out for consoles. I wouldn't get my hopes up, though, because the author of OC Decorator has not updated his plugins since February. So unless somebody creates an OC Decorator-like plugin for console gaming, it might not happen. But I hope it does, of course. Gregoron Blackband says, Something as good as bacon like sausage? Well, they are made from the same animal, so I'd put the two in a similar category. Man Man Max says deer bacon. Ooh. Ooh, deer bacon. Reindeer bacon. Ooh. Makes Santa cry with my reindeer bacon. Robin2258 says, what's the cigar tonight? This is a La Aurora y Leon uh, Corojo, which I'm enjoying. I, I've been enjoying this one. This is my favorite of the new batch I just got. I do like the Principes, but they smoke a little harder. In, in that they're harder to smoke. Like, you have to cut a lot off of the foot of the cigar, just um, or the butt of the cigar, just to allow enough air to pass through it. It's so tightly packed. Madman Max says I make children cry with my Bambi bacon. <clears throat> How about Bambi's mom bacon? Because she's actually dead. Although probably rotted by now. This is getting dark. Come on, guys. Oh, spoiler alert, Bambi. Spoilers, sorry. Gosh. Robin2258 says, I've heard some good things about La Aurora. They're, 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 I think they're probably my favorite brand. I've tried uh, La Aurora, Corojas, Cameroons. There are a few others that I really enjoy. Um, and I like every single one of them. Man. Having a hard time keeping this lit for some reason today. <laughs> the Bansy Veggie says, Oh man, and I was just gonna watch Bambi tonight. Thanks for the spoilers, Oxhorn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of spoilers, no Warcraft movie spoilers. I mean, I realize that we all know the story behind the Warcraft lore, but I have heard that the movie is not quite faithful to the, to the lore, and uh, so I don't want it to be spoiled for me. I also read that it wasn't very good, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. <laughs> I want it to be good so badly 
so badly. We've been waiting for this movie for 10 years. I was at BlizzCon 2004 when they came up on stage and announced the World of Warcraft movie. And I heard the cheers in person. The entire crowd went wild. So there's in, there, there's an entire group of people who have been waiting for a decade to watch this Warcraft movie. Some of them have been talking about it to their kids, saying, Someday, son, someday there will be a Warcraft movie. And now they're 10 years old or 11 years old and it's out. <laughs> and they're taking their families. Anyway, it took them long enough to make this movie and I'm, I'm eager to see it. I just hope, I hope it's it's good. I, I have not read any reviews because I'm scared. Salmon Filet is following. Thank you very much, Salmon Filet. I haven't read any reviews because I'm scared. I just have read headlines saying, Oh, Warcraft movie does not live up to the hype and blah, blah, blah. Or you have to be a basement dweller to be able to get it. And I'm going, well, I hope that's not true. I hope that's not true. Madman Max 21 says, I've seen it and I'm not going to say a word about it. Thank you. I appreciate it. He says, don't believe the accursed reviewers. They like, they liked Dragon Ball Evolution. Did they? Did they really? Because if so, I won't believe him ever again. All for 17 says, I didn't have my hopes up for the Warcraft movie anyway. Vancey Vetcher says, I do recommend that you see it as a huge fan of Warcraft. The critics are expecting it to be something that it's not. Greg Hartung's, or Gregoron Blackbane, sorry, says, uh, don't listen to those bigoted critics. Jesse Cox himself said it was a good film for Warcraft fans. But I want it to be a good film, you know? Not just for Warcraft fans. I want it to be a good film. But you know what? It's really hard because if they made it a good film, then all the Warcraft fans would go to it and walk away disappointed. They would say, oh, they messed this up on the lore and they messed that up on the lore. And then if they make it just for Warcraft fans, then all the film critics are going to say, well, it was a trite story and it had been done in the past and blah, blah, blah. So, Old Ironbark says, I heard the bad reviews are made by those who are not fans of Warcraft. They keep saying, you have to be a fan to blah, blah, blah. Well, we're all fans, so I'm sure it will be great. I, I really hope it is. Tara Wraith says, I know what I'm doing this weekend. Me too. I'll probably go this weekend. Anyway, so I have that to look forward to. You all have that to look forward to. M many of you have probably already seen it. I logged, I tried, I logged into Overwatch to download the latest patch because, of course, Blizzard is going to be having patch after patch after patch. So I made sure that it was up to date in time for today's show. And all I saw on every single channel, Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, Overwatches, new Warcraft movie, new Warcraft. They're, they're really trying to rally the base. They want everyone who plays the Blizzard game to go out and see this movie. And I don't blame them. You know, more power to them. I hope it works out for them. Madman Max gives us his numerical opinion. He says, to me, as a film, it's a solid seven. But as a Warcraft lore monkey, I give it a nine. That's, a, that's about the pretty glowing review. All right. Alright, I just checked Facebook and I don't see any new fan art or posts uh, aside from videos. And I can't show videos on the stream. So I'm going to go ahead and skip those for now. Let's log into SpeakPipe and see if there are any recorded messages. Demons Inside says, you know, there's some movies where I just don't want to see, so this weekend I'll probably end up building Coastal Cottage. Good luck, my friend. You saw my Coastal Cottage efficiency build. That settlement is a beast. It's so hard to figure out what to do with it because there's this completely dilapidated building right in the middle of the settlement on top of a big gaping hole that goes down underneath the ground. I, I, if you remember my settlement video, you'll see that I ended up putting a trap door above the hole and turning it into like a raider pit with a bunch of raider bones and stuff. But that's all I could think of. I couldn't think of anything else for it. Mm. 
Zaldron says, I was busy doing a stream with another stream. Sorry, I'm here now. Hey, we've got some celebrity on the show today. What, the number 10 best, uh, what's his name? Gozaku, Go Goki, or whatever. The Ninja Star guy in Overwatch. Overwatch royalty on the chat today. Andy the DK is on the program. What is on your mind? Good sir, the floor is Greetings, yours. Oxhorn. Andy the DK here. How are you doing, my friend? Hope you're doing well. My greetings to you and all of the Scotch and... Top four? Sorry for the interruption, Andy the DK. I've just been corrected. Zalthron is now number four in the world for Gen... Geniji. Or Genji. Oh. And nah, not really, he says. Oh. Are you number four or not? Anyway, back to the program. Andy the DK. Greetings, Oxhorn. Andy the DK here. How are you doing, my friend? Hope you're doing well. My greetings to you and all of the Scotch and Smoke Rings chat and everyone else. I just returned from the early screening of the Warcraft movie. I will give no spoilers, but I will only say that it is a dream come dream come true for me, a diehard fan of the game oh, and its lore. I absolutely loved it. Um, no classy question of the week. This is just kind of a movie review. The CGI was absolutely amazing. I recommend every single one of you guys go see it. Uh, it was just a, a fan's dream come true. It was amazing. So I just wanted to give you a quick little review of the movie, and I hope you have a fabulous evening. Thank you, Ox, and keep it classy, everyone. Well, thank you, Andy. I know you've got good taste, and you have set my mind at ease. The critics have been ripping it apart, and you know what? Maybe that's just an attack upon geek culture or something. Maybe they just don't understand geek culture, which is why they rip the movie apart. But I, as a geek, am glad to hear another fellow geek give it the thumbs up, so I'll probably go see it this weekend. Uh, the Great and Mighty Potisium is on the program today. What is on your mind, good sir? Hello, I am sure aware of. As far as releasing of Warcraft, uh, looking for it to myself. <laughs> I um, wanted to ask you, are you going to see it or are you just waiting for it to actually be released to DVD? Or if you want to see it at all? I hope you do reply to this message. Until next time, I'm sorry. Stay fancy. Not fancy, but uh, classy. Goodbye. Uh, uh, thank you, Patizium. And of course, the answer to your question is yes, I do plan on seeing it. No, I have not seen it yet. But it is on my agenda. Maybe we'll see it this weekend. It's tough. As the father of two young babies, my son just turned four. My son is four years old yesterday. Yesterday was his birthday. He turned four. And my daughter just turned two. I got this. I got this. My daughter just turned two the day before him. They're, that's right. Their birthdays are one day apart. And it's hard as a father of a four and two year old to find time to go entertain yourself in geeky pursuits like play video games or go to movies, especially movies that are two hours long or something like that. So we'll try and find a babysitter. If not, I might not be able to see the movie. But boy, I would love to see it. Salmon Filet correctly says Are you not supposed to light cigars with matches as gasoline ruins the flavor? And you are technically correct, so I commend you for that. You're supposed to light um, cigars with matches because the fuel inside something like a Bic lighter uh, can taint the flavor of a cigar. Uh, traditionally, I use these butane lighters because I've got a special kind of fuel, which is right here, which is flavorless and scentless. And so you can use this and there will be no s taste impartation. However, this is busted. I don't have any matches. All I had was this, and I can't taste or smell anyway, so I might as well. No skin, as they say, off my proverbial back. Zaltharin says, but Yogs, I am number four. I was just saying that I'm not the celebrity. You're the celebrity. Ah. Well, thank you. Scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, right? <laughs> Demons Inside says, Oh joy, the daily speeding on the major road I live on. Maybe we will witness a crash. Joy to the world. Yeah, especially 
in my neighborhood. I live in a very residential neighborhood. Lots of families with small kids. Every now and then we'll get some lunatic come by going 50, 60 miles an hour in a, in a residential area. So thankfully no one's been hurt. We actually have a lot of construction going on in the neighborhood. You'll probably hear heavy machinery doing this program. And that's also like trying to avoid an obstacle course. Old Ironbark says, wow, time flies. Indeed it does. Can't believe it's been four years. <laughs> does not feel like four years. I remember when my son was born, I'm sitting in the hospital, and the idea for the Grow a Beard Now website pops into my head. And uh, that's when I built the website. They're pretty much the same age. That website and my son are the same age. Robin says, Zippo's not too bad if it's been filled up. Light the cigar far from the wick so that the most impure, so that most of the impurities burn off before hitting the leaf. Yeah, I've never really experienced anything too acidic or coarse when using a Bic. Madman Max has a two-parter, ladies and gentlemen, each a minute long. <laughs> Madman Max, not a man for short words. Let's uh, let's hear what he's got to say. Greetings, Oxford. It is I, Madman Max, here to do whatever it is I do. Anyway, today we're going to talk about um, a certain film that is coming out tomorrow for you and has been out for the last 10 days, I believe, in the UK. Oh, yeah? Um, I I'm not going to give any spoilers, so Thank don't you. need to turn your headphones off. I'm just going to say, well, ask, are you watching it first day of release or are you going to watch it on the weekend? Are you even... Uh, prepared to watch it? Are you hyped? Are you are you enthralled and can't wait or what? I am genuinely curious to find out. Have a lovely evening and enjoy your scotch. Thanks. There's this tree in my garden. <clears throat> and it's some sort of Asian tree. And it has decided to pollinate or something. It's It just... One day I walk in and all of the petals had fallen off of this flowering tree and it was covered in this green mist and just releasing all of this pollen into the world. And ever since then I have been sneezing like a maniac. So if I pause the program to sneeze, it's because of that blasted tree in my garden. Whew. All right, part two of Madman Max. Here we go. Greetings, Oxford. It is I, Madman Max here once again to bring you more mythological lore from the furthest lands of England down to wherever I decide to go on this day. Um, today we're going to look at dollar hands. There is one particular dollar hand that is uh, associated with Ichabod Crane oh. from the, uh, the old Disney movie cartoon sort of things. Could you hazard a guess at this particular beast's name? If you guess right, I shall let you know in the uh, chat. But if you guess it wrong, you shall have to write 10,000 lines proclaiming that you do not know something that you should, even though it is a part of your childhood. My childhood? Have a lovely evening, Oxhorn, and enjoy your delicious scotch. Uh, is it a mandrake? Is it a scarecrow? I have no idea. Ram says, Dulahan. Robin says, Bradford Pear? I have no idea what these things are. It's Doolahan, says Robin. Robin says Doolahan. All right, it's, well, it's Doolahan. There you go, that came from my mind. Totally not from Robin. <clears throat> Thank you, Robin. The Headless Horseman is the Doolahan, says Madman Max. Okay. Uh, the generic pyro says, I was so focused on getting to Good Neighbor that I didn't notice that the show had started. Well, I hope you made it to Good Neighbor and that you found it just as seedy as it always has been. That's the loveliness of Good Neighbor. It's a nice, seedy little town. Okay, Zathron is giving me some, some instructions. Here we go. Type horde on the Twitch chat and then type something.
It didn't do anything. There you go. How's that? All right, those are all of the messages. Cheers, fellas. It did something. Okay, there we go. For the Gord! I mean Horde! For the Nord! For the Oxnord! <laughs> Can't you see your icon? I can. I can see my icon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Allergies, wow. All right, um, the Vancy Badger says, Oxford, could you weave us a story tonight? All right, all right, I will weave you a story. Once upon the time, there was, there was a man named. Philly. He didn't live in Philly and neither was he a Philly, but his name was Philly. And he worked in a pumpkin patch. And one day as he was harvesting pumpkins, somebody came in and smashed one and then looked at him and said, for the gourd! And then ran away. Because, you know, pumpkins are... Gourds. He was so angry that one of his precious pumpkins was destroyed by this terrorist. This gourd-smashing terrorist. That he dressed himself up in a cloak and got on a horse and started riding through the night to seek out vengeance upon this gourd destroyer. He met a gang of hoodlums in the streets. And he engaged them in combat and said, I shall rid this world of bully filth. But he was destroyed. He was utterly defeated. And he went home licking his wounds. Just, oh man, I'm so sore. I got beat up by these hoodlums in the streets. So he sought out an old witch who lived in a hollowed out stump in this vale not far from his home. It's a good thing it was local. And he went to the witch and he said, Oh witch, my gourds are under attack. My poor pumpkins are under attack by these hoodlums who run into my pumpkin patches and smash them and say, for the gourd, and then run away. What shall I do? And she looked at him and said, <laughs> Well, my pretty. Ooh, that hurt. <laughs> to defeat said hoodlums, you must cut off your own head. Only then will you be imbued with the power of the... Gord. And the guy says, oh. So he walks away and he thinks to himself, what shall I do? Shall I cut off my head to be imbued with the power of the gourd? Or shall I remain a normal human being and suffer from these hoodlums? But he couldn't take it anymore. So he goes to France and he finds a guillotine and he says, Blasphemy to your queen. And they go, oh, okay, let's kill you. So they took him to the guillotine, and they chopped off his head. And the skies went dark, and lightning struck. And a huge pumpkin patch started to sprout out all around him. And the largest pumpkin grew eyes and a glowing mouth. And it leapt up from the patch, spun in the air, and attached itself to his head. He stood to his feet, now with the pumpkin head, and said, Ah ha 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 ha! My name is Doolahan! Well, 
No, my name is, what was his name? Philly. My name is Philly! I shall change it to Doolahan! <laughs> and he leaps upon his steed, and his steed neighs with a loud neigh. And off he goes to enact his revenge. And he slaughtered all of the hoodlums near his home with flaming pumpkins. For they had insulted his gourds. And as he rode off into the sunset, you could hear him cackle and say, For the gourd! <laughs> the generic pyro says, So to save his gourds, he must get rid of his gourd. <laughs> the generic pyro says, How ex existential, indeed. Zalzman says, And that is how the Headless Horseman was born. Robin2258 says, Doolahans don't have pumpkins for heads. The Bancy Fadger does a, a face palm. Is that, does that mean that that was the weakest of my stories? <laughs> All for 17 says, do the pumpkins explode like bombs? Maybe. Southron says, that was an interesting history. All right, well. This week in science! <clears throat> the European Union announces that all scientific articles should be free by the year 2020. Really, I didn't realize there were enslaved scientific articles out there. What do they mean? Does that mean that there are some scientific articles that are too naughty to be read by the public? Is that what they're saying? Like the book burning of scientific articles? It's weird. Zatherin says 9.5 out of 10, it needed more pecan pie. <laughs> Maybe when uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving roll around, we'll have a pumpkin pie themed show. Free of charge articles, Ox. Oh. So monetarily free. I see. So it's not like they were enslaved. Okay, gotcha. I, it, it, I got there in the end. It's okay. This week in physics! Physicists find a way to slow light without intercepting it by making it twist as it moves. So the light itself isn't slowing. But the path it's taking is becoming a little less direct. So can one truly say that light is slowed, or is the path light takes a longer route? This week in physics! No evidence supports the hypothesis that black holes are actually two-dimensional holograms. What does that even mean? What science fiction reality do we live in? Black holes, which are real things, tangible objects we, which we can measure in the universe, are actually two-dimensional holograms being projected from where? This week in medicine, new 3D printed medicine offers multiple medications and time releases for each. 3D printed medicine? Are you saying that you can now 3D print drugs? The crack junkies of the future, ladies and gentlemen. Meth labs of the future. Just connect your USB port. Last week, an energy. Genetically engineered bacteria created that can take CO2 out of the air and convert it into energy. Hmm. I mean, that's good, right? <clears throat> Global warming and all of that, but... If it's genetically engineered bacteria, how can you keep tabs on it? Like, say you release some of this uh, genetically engineered bacteria into the, into the air, and it starts to gobble up all that CO2. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And then it consumes all the CO2. 
Well, we kind of need a little bit of CO2, don't we? This week in wearable technology. Scientists create an electronic material that can heal itself, and it works even after being cut in half. Ooh. Now that is cool, ladies and gentlemen. We're already... So this is synth. Synth skin, right? An electronic material that can heal itself even after being cut in half. This is what synths are, are coated in. <laughs> All right, it's that time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get some Overwatch on, eh? All right, let's see if I can get this working. Here we go. All right. So. Zathrion, am I playing with you today, or shall I just do a random stream? Hey! Perfect timing. Madgen Justin just donated. Thank you so much, Madgen Justin. You are a king among kings. Ironbark wants an invite. Guys, can you invite Ironbark? Uh... <laughs> oh, I cannot invite players to my group. Hey, there you go. You guys got him. Great. <laughs> that generic pyro says, I suppose I'd already be a good neighbor if I wasn't already running around distracted by every little thing. That is the nature of Fallout 4. You get distracted by every little thing. I'll go to defend a settlement from raiders or something. <coughs> and then I'll walk away to get back to my settlement build and I get distracted by um, something. Good evening, gents. <coughs> it's a pleasure to meet you guys. I say we do a battle of some sort. Trevor Green says, So, Ox, are you up for a game which I'll carry you again? I am up for any game where I'm carried. I know I can't carry myself. My my playing skills are certainly not up to par. So if anyone in the team wants to carry me, you're, <laughs> you're more than welcome to. And I'll, I'll give you all the glory for my victories. <laughs> carry me. Career Profile. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I like Junkrat, eh? <laughs> it didn't even register for one minute that I played Hanzo. <clears throat> Looks like I won more games with Torbjorn. <clears throat> Bastion? <coughs> Pardon me. I think I played Bastion once. My weapon accuracy with Genji is way better. I have no multi-kill streaks. All right, good to go. <clears throat> How should we do this? Do I just click play? Zalthion says inspect my career profile. Whoa, 86 hours on Genji. There he is. 
Most final blows, 42. Wow. <clears throat> Most solo kills done on Tracer. Three hundred and eighty nine games won. Wow. <clears throat> That's pretty intense. Now entering King's <coughs> Attack. Why wreck a ruin? Uh, why ruin a working system, right? Character is it that they're nerfing? I read something about them nerfing somebody. I see some activity out there. Roadhog guy is pretty intense. I got this, I got this, I know what I gotta do. What does a harmony orb do? <laughs> well, that's what I get.
Goodness gracious, this guy is in just the right spot, isn't he? I think these guys know what they're doing. Is there another way around? The objective is mine. Be quick about it. Fire in the hole. No. Sixty seconds. I am taking the objective. Defeated. Rough stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Rough stuff. Good team. Play of the game. Oh, let's break it. Way to go, Zathrion! A performance worthy of repetition. I should probably try playing Roadhog, huh? See what he does. <clears throat> Damage and knock back enemies in front of you. Chain hook. Drag a targeted enemy to you. <clears throat> Take a breather. Heal yourself over a short time. Scrap gun. Attackers incoming. Defend of 
Objective A. Let's try that again. I'm not doing pretty well with them. Let's try McCree. Justice ain't gonna dispense itself. Dead eye. <laughs> I didn't even know you could punch people. Wow. Unfinished business. As McCree, use your stun and right click. Alright, I can do that. Try a tweet Torbjorn. Zalthion says, "Ox, did you see the wolves? It changes from the dragons based upon uh, my skin." Now that's cool. Ouch. Thank <laughs> you. 
probably not the best place to place this guy, but it seems to be working. At least he didn't get my turret! <laughs> Robin says, wow, pausing in game to take a puff. Shows your priorities, Oxhorn. Indeed it does. Well, I'm staying alive longer with this guy. Probably due to my defense. <laughs> Probably due to you guys. Oh! Oh! What was that? Ah, that's what that was. Back to the drawing board. You feel that? I feel it. I heard. Well played. Play of the game. You go, I got the key of Kuro. Ten eliminations, better than my career average. Yay, I got a loot box, Whee! I'll try him, just to see if he's any good. <laughs> Zalthrian says, did you see the wolves ox? Indeed I did. 
pretty impressive. Dragon Blade, unsheath a deadly melee weapon, deflect, deflects incoming projectiles towards the direction you're aiming, swift strike, rapidly dash forward and inflict damage on the enemy, shuriken, throw projectiles, cyber agility, climb onto walls. Oh, that's cool. I see. I will not waste this chance. <laughs> so not a close quarters, gentlemen, I see. to what I'm comfortable with. Mmm. Mmm. 
Well done. I think I remember this map. Should have probably hopped off, huh? That was pretty impressive right there. Heroes never die. Oh! Oh no. He got resurrected, I see. Tights are licking. Kids on ticket. Delays McCree. You go waka teki wo kuro! Oh man! How did I not kill that? in behind me. Pretty impressive. Thank you. 
Good game indeed. Way to go, Zalfrion! Thanks, Terror Wraith. <laughs> now arriving at Nijang Tower. Prepare to attack. See you, Zalthrion. Pleasure. Self repair, reconfigure. Immobile with a powerful rotary cannon. Mobile with a light. Okay. behind me. fun.
just a matter of Impressive. So it's best out of two?
Well, that was a waste. <laughs> Pin me against the wall. Get over here and defend the objective. Let's finish this. Fire in the Jeez, wow. That's an impressive guy. I loaded like two clips into him.
Wow, he got us all. Wow! Eliminated and it was eliminated. Uh, one more after this, ladies and gentlemen. Play of the game. Good game, good game. The Banty Fadger says, make sure you don't forget us when uh, we when you have six million subscribers on YouTube. Don't you worry. I could never forget you. What is this? Chicken? Big Stacks 2 says, seven years, good lord, I remember the very first episode, and it definitely doesn't feel that long ago. No, it doesn't, but it was 2009. Cigar Ox says, love to type, but have to drive. Tune in next week for episode 359, and remember, the 7th anniversary show will be on Tuesday, July 28th. Bring your own refreshments and cigars. <laughs> Indeed. It'll be a blast. Alright, one more, and then we will do the smoke ship.
Imagine Eric Pyro says, Great show tonight, Ox. Why, thank you. I do appreciate it. Sure. How do I invite people? There we go. Wow, they're taking a while to find us a game, aren't they? There we go. Oh, it's an escort. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't drink the coffee. Always tasting like more than dirt. You hear that? Try not to get yourselves killed out there. I thought I equipped a new spray.
Thanks for the heals. I feel it, thank you, good sir. Wow, that's a... Hey, look at that! We won! My hat says, hey, Alex, it's been a while. At least a couple of years since I've watched the show. Well, it's, pl it's a pleasure to have you back. Tagout says, how's Overwatch treating you? It's treating me very well. Can't complain. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to make that the last one. All right, here is the Fancy Badger's smoke ship. The fans put together $5 million in order to bring Oxhorn back to Machinima. Ox hires a team of other talented folk to help make multiple videos at once while he focuses most of his glory days on making Fallout 4 tutorials. <laughs> One video involved a legion of roasted pumpkins fighting hordes of gourds. It was so successful that Ox won seven, uh, several Academy Awards. Despite critical acclaim, social justice elves began protesting that the film misrepresented scientific articles by involving talking vegetation. 
Oxhorn takes a puff of the world's finest cigar and shouts for the gourd, giving life to a gargantuan smoke battlecruiser. Using the ship, Oxen fans make their way to the uh, to the protest and try to convince them that it was a harmless movie. When all fails, our heroes scared away the elves by doing the monster mash. All except for Gregoron, who pulled a heart tongue in fear after seeing all the red hair dye. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Terra Wraith says, that was a pretty fun Overwatch. Bloden Shime says, agreed. I really appreciated playing with you guys. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, everybody. All right, any other submissions before we move on? All right. Whoop, looks like I'm out of cigar here. Oi. It's hard to relight it when it's that short. All right, ladies and gentlemen, pay close attention. If you miss it, it'll be gone forever. So don't blink. Here we go. I'm going to blow a smoke shape with nothing but this cigar and this mouth. Don't blink. that for the briefest of moments before your very eyes was everything that <laughs> the fancy badger just said five million dollars gourds elves protests movies all sorts of stuff all right now here's i'm going to give you guys an extra smoke ship are you ready have you guys ever seen a smoke ship in a bottle And that is how you get a ship in a bottle, ladies and gentlemen. People talk about strings and glue and levers. No, no, no. Artistry in a bottle. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for coming to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 358. I'm going to head on out and hug my kiddos before... They go to bed. So thank you all for coming, and be sure to tune in next time. Same Ox time, same Ox channel, here at twitch.tv slash scotchandsmokerings. I'll see you all again next week, and until then, ladies and gentlemen, be sure that each and every one of you stays classy.